Who has the best offensive cooldowns in WoW PvP? Well, we can't just look at burst DPS alone when we think about this. To truly rank highly on the list, a cooldown stack needs to check at least five boxes. Of course, since lethal front-loaded damage is the most important part of a strong burst window, it's going to be our first of five criteria in our rankings. Having a strong and immediate impact means a higher chance of catching people off guard compared to longer ramping damage that's more drawn out. Our second criteria is whether or not the burst sequence is going to be able to affect multiple players, ideally at the same time. If the damage can cleave, it's basically twice as effective, forcing CDs from multiple players to open up more kill windows later on. For our third criteria, we need to think about the length of the cooldown window. Now, as you and I both know here, there is so much micro CC in the game that it can be hard to get value out of the shorter CDs. So the longer a damage window lasts, the better it's gonna be, on average, at forcing those crucial defensives. Next up, we're also looking for damage that's hard to avoid. If the damage is impossible to counter once it starts, then once again, it has a higher chance of being lethal. And finally, we have our fifth criteria, which is efficiency. Even if a cooldown isn't super lethal, we need to think about how often it can be used. Any burst CD that can be used more than once per minute is going to do well in this category. We're going to cover each spec one by one and explain how their burst damage works and what specific cooldowns you need to pay attention to. Then we're going to be giving each spec a ranking on a tier list from best to worst. Now, since we already know that increasing overall damage is one key part of climbing rating, being able to maximize burst damage is equally as important if you want to truly climb the ranks. Our burst guides are designed to simplify every sequence you'll see today in easy to follow steps that you can practice right now. We even have advanced damage videos that teach you how to min-max your rotation with tips that you might not know about. And when the next patch rolls around for season four, all of our guides are gonna be updated, which allows you to stay ahead of the competition. Everything on our website is designed to make sure you can rank up fast, whether you're an experienced player or you're just starting out. And this is why we even offer a rating game guarantee, where we promise you'll improve your rank while using our guides. To learn more and get an exclusive discount offer, check out the links below. But for now, let's get back to the video. To make sense of our rankings, let's look at a class with three different levels of burst. Starting off with the spec who has the weakest cooldown window in the game, Affliction Warlock. Now, looking at log data alone, Affliction Warlock burst DPS is actually pretty high. So how could we possibly give it a low tier ranking here? Well, for one, the burst sequence has an incredibly slow ramp time, requiring the Warlock to get a full set of dots on one target and then soul swapping them to another, making sure Phantom Singularity is up on both. Before using Dark Glare, which is their true offensive cooldown. And then to make the burst effective, the Warlock then needs to spam Malefic Rapture to make the dots explode. So even though this damage can technically affect multiple targets and can last a very long time, it's so simple to just avoid it. Not only can healers dispel the empowered dots, but the sequence can be delayed with interrupts to prevent the damage in the first place or to deny the burst later on Malefic Rapture. And the fact that Dark Glare has a two minute cooldown means it's not exactly the most efficient, which is why Affliction Warlock is gonna be going in the C tier. Demo Warlock Burst has similar downsides too, having a longer ramp and being fairly easy to counter. To be most effective, Warlocks need to have multiple demons active, including Vile Fiend and their Grimoire Felguard before summoning their Tyrant. And obviously this is a lot of steps, which makes the burst window feel incredibly tight. The damage is also a bit more drawn out than we'd like and can be easy to counter. You can stop the summon tyrant cast itself or even CC the pets with roots and fears all while using line of sight as a last resort. The key advantages demo has over affliction though is that the damage window is going to last longer on average and tyrant has half the cooldown of dark glare. Demo warlocks also have a passive mortal strike so their burst is going to feel a bit more effective in deeper dampening. So because the damage is more frequent and isn't countered as easily, we're actually going to be placing demonology burst on the B tier. Now that we know what weak burst sequences look like, let's go to the other extreme with Destro Warlock. Now, if you think Chaos Bolt is the reason why Destro Warlock burst is ranked so high, well, think again. 
The scariest ability a Destro Warlock has is actually Dimensional Rift, which is an instant cast 45 second cooldown with three charges. And if all three charges are used at once, it's some of the scariest damage in the entire game. This is because the damage is actually coming from a portal and not the Warlock themselves, which means the Warlock can cast other instant spells at the exact same time, essentially double dipping on all the damage. The portals will even hit through LOS, making it almost impossible to avoid. The cooldown of Rifts can even be reset with Immolate Ticks, adding an extra layer of unpredictability to this damage. It's hard to know how many portals a Warlock has available at any given time and whether they can instantly summon more during their burst. So as one of the absolute most efficient and lethal damage buttons in the game, Dimensional Rifts earned Destro Warlock a spot on the S tier. And now that we've made sense of both good and bad burst cooldowns, let's make our way down the rankings going over cooldown windows from every class. Frost DKs are a spec designed exclusively around their burst window, so surely it has to be good. There are several key reasons why it ranks so highly too, starting with the fact that it can be hard to avoid. This is because the sequence starts off with a grip into AoE Blinding Sleet, which will usually be followed up by some AoE stun. The scary damage comes from Pillar of Frost, which is going to be paired with Empower Rune Weapon and Death and Decay, building resources and allowing the damage to cleave. And this is exactly why Frost EKs are honestly just so scary. Not only do they AoE CC the entire team at once, but also cleave them down with lots of front-loaded damage. The cherry on the cake, too, is the fact that this sequence can be repeated every minute, making it incredibly efficient. So because of its high AoE pressure and good efficiency, we're going to be ranking Frost DK Burst on the S tier. Unholy Death Knight has a much more layered burst sequence, stacking multiple disjointed cooldowns together. The most important is Unholy Assault, which is going to be paired with a few things, most notably Apocalypse, to instantly burst on a single target, which will also be combined with Abomination Limb, Unholy Blight, Dark Transformation, and even Defile or Death and Decay in order to cleave. Now, this might all seem like a lot of potential damage, but the fact that the ramp is so long and the damage is so drawn out makes it significantly less lethal than Frost DK. And generally speaking, pet classes suffer a bit in the burst department, trading efficiency and longevity for actual cooldown power. Even though the damage can be hard to avoid and can hit multiple targets, the impact is never immediate like it is with Frost DK's one minute pop. So even though it might be fairly efficient, the slow ramp of Unholy DK burst is the main reason we're going to be placing it in the B tier. Demon Hunter is a very interesting case here because its main cooldown is not what you might expect. Many people simply look out for Metamorphosis and while it's true this ability is important and you do want to look out for it, the main cooldown to look out for is Essence Break because the combo of both will cause Death Sweep to hit incredibly hard and since both Essence Break and Death Sweep are AoE, the damage can be lethal on multiple targets. The other reason why tracking Metamorphosis by itself can be bait is because I-Beam will automatically activate Meta on a 40 second cooldown that easily aligns with Essence Break in every DH stun, which can make the damage hard to avoid even if it's something telegraphed. The good news though is that this secondary Meta only lasts a few seconds, and so does Essence Break itself. So as long as you prioritize trading into the short Essence Break window, you're in a good position to survive the damage. Anyway, because of how lethal this combo can be across multiple targets, we're placing Demon Hunter Burst on the S tier. If you've installed any weak aura package, you're probably going to be familiar with Incarnation from Balanced Druids, and that's for a very good reason. This is easily one of the most powerful cooldowns in the entire game. Not only does Incarnation instantly deal AoE damage with Orbital Strike, but it'll also apply an extra dot to any targets it hits which even gives the Druid an additional damage modifier on top of the extra haste and crit from Incarn itself. During the cooldown window, Star Surge will cost less Astral Power, allowing the Druid to front load up to four Star Surges in a row, which can all deal over 200,000 damage. Now we shouldn't have to say more, but if you weren't convinced already, the cooldown duration lasts 20 to 30 seconds, 
which makes it super scary and deep dampening. Balanced Druid Incarn is definitely a game-winning cooldown and is going to easily go in the S tier. Feral Druid Burst is significantly different, and unlike Balance, the main cooldown isn't really Incarnation itself. For Feral, Incarnation is more or less a quality of life cooldown, allowing them to ramp up damage faster and get a free re-stealth, which will be used to stun. The main ability to monitor against Feral Druid is actually Feral Frenzy, which is a hard-hitting bleed feeding the Druid combo points to do more downstream damage. And in case you've been wondering why Feral Druids try and spam Cyclone these days, it's because successful clone casts give them a free Feral Frenzy on their next finisher, which means that Feral Burst essentially has zero cooldown. Now, of course, Cyclone can be stopped, and there are multiple ways to remove bleeds. The sheer threat of Feral Frenzy damage is why the spec is trained in almost every solo shuffle game. If you let too many clones go through, you're just going to become overwhelmed eventually. So even though Feral Damage isn't quite as bursty as Boomkin, the sheer efficiency of Feral Frenzy is enough to put their burst on the A tier. Next up, Devastation Evoker. Now you probably know where this is going to be ranked, but let's explain the sequence in order to justify its ranking here. Like many specs we've covered so far, Devastation Burst is multi-layered. Dragon Rage is the main cooldown to monitor since it deals instant AoE damage while also giving them at least 60% additional damage for its duration thanks to their mastery. This will then be paired with more downstream damage, including Eternity Surge and an instant AoE Fire Breath, which will then buff the damage of Disintegrate. Because most of this damage is happening to multiple targets at once, usually in a stun, Evoker damage is not only lethal, but can even be hard to avoid. If you don't trade defensives into their damage or stop the disintegrate channels, you will almost certainly die. So, as you might have already predicted, Devastation Evoker is going to be in the S tier. Augmentation Evoker is a bit strange, since its burst window isn't that scary from the Evoker themselves. Even Might is technically an efficient cooldown, and even causes upheaval to hit pretty hard but overall, Augmentation Evokers are more reliant on their teammates' damage in order for this ability to be truly effective. The Evoker themselves won't really do much outside of a single upheaval, which doesn't make their damage very scary. So without much lethality and a heavy reliance on teammates to do the real work of it, Augmentation Evoker Burst goes in the C tier. We already discussed the limitations of Burst when it comes to pet classes, but will Beast Mastery Hunter be any different? Let's find out here. There is a bit of confusion over how BM Hunters actually burst, so let's cover it. It might seem like Bestial Wrath is their main damage cooldown, but this is a common misconception. Most of the times, BM Hunters simply use this whenever it comes up, not really caring to line it up with any specific moment. Their real burst cooldown is Call of the Wild, which is combined with Death Chakram and Bloodshed in order to do drawn out damage, usually on a single target. Just like Demo Warlock Burst, this damage does pose a noticeable threat, but doesn't have strong, immediate impact like we've seen with other abilities on this list so far. Combine this with the fact that the damage can be avoided with a simple root effect, and we're going to be placing BM Hunter on the B tier. Marks, on the other hand, is definitely a spec defined by high burst damage, and is arguably one of the most dangerous and less actively avoided. Their cooldown stack starts with True Shot and Death Chakram, which will then be sequenced with Explosive Shot and Rapid Fire for some overlapping damage, all of which can technically cleave, and with True Shot's 15 second duration, Mark's Hunters can easily tab other targets during this window. Now we don't need to tell you how lethal this burst feels, because you probably experienced it yourself, especially as a cloth or leather class. So why isn't Mark's the best spec in the game? Now, in some ways, Mark's Hunters suffer the same problem as casters, and under pressure, it can actually be difficult to sit still and channel their damage, all with the possibility of being disarmed or simply line-of-sighted on their burst. This is why Mark's is a classic Noob Slayer spec. Without any counterplay, the damage is an almost guaranteed one-shot, but with quick reaction, it can actually get shut down. But since the damage itself has the potential to be so lethal, Mark's Hunter Burst we're going to be putting them in the S tier. Survival Hunter is in a very interesting spot when it comes to burst windows. The spec itself already has high base damage, 
which leads to some obscurity when it comes to the actual power of their CDs. The main cooldown to look out for is Coordinated Assault, which is going to be layered on top of Death Chakram and Explosive Shot, while the Hunter channels Fury of the Eagle, almost like a Windwalker Monk, before spamming Wildfire Bombs. The damage during this time is going to be overlapping, which means losing out on a lot of HP very suddenly once the Explosive Shot explodes. The obscurity of survival damage is really what makes it so difficult to react to. Even experienced players can get caught off guard by all the damage sources happening all at the same time. But since the damage is partially delayed and requires multiple globals to set up, we're not going to be putting survival quite on the S tier, but instead, you're going to be putting them as our first spec on the A plus tier. Arcane Mage is a spec that you might think would score high on burst damage rankings, but unfortunately, it suffers a few core problems. The burst window comes from Arcane Surge, which actually has a cast time, giving the mage a damage buff, then Touch of the Magi is going to be used to store damage on a single target, doing an AoE explosion later on, based on damage done. Here, you can start to see the issue with these cooldowns. The damage itself needs to ramp up a bit before truly being effective. Since Arcane Mage is pretty much limited to a single spell school, and since Arcane Surge itself needs to be hardcasted, the damage during this window can be easily stopped and is very telegraphed. And even though with the tier set, mages can cleave multiple targets, we don't think Arcane Mage scores any better than B tier. Fire Mage, on the other hand, is able to massively front load its damage and is going to be scoring much better. The burst itself comes from Combustion, which can even be activated while casting a big fireball. Mages can then also press Fire Blast while casting too, which is even off the GCD, just like Combustion. This then gives the Mage a Fireball, Fire Blast, and an Instant Pyro, which will all hit the target at the exact same time, and can even be lined up with the newly buffed Living Bomb, causing a massive chunk of damage, building a stacking Ignite Dot the entire time. The main downsides of Combustion is that the damage is really only effective on a single target with the standard build, and no gimmicky flame strike tech. Most of the damage is instant, so it can actually be hard to avoid, and with a variable cooldown, we think Combustion deserves a spot on the S tier. Frost Mage was one of the hardest specs to actually rank on this list. On paper, Frost Mages have one of the deadliest burst combos, which uses the haste of Icy Veins to cast Frost Bomb and then channel an Empowered Ray of Frost, which is more than enough damage to completely wipe out someone's HP. While all of this damage is strong, it does have a bit of a ramp up and can easily be countered. Ray of Frost can be canceled with Shadow Meld or any ability that removes movement impairing effects, and Frost Bomb can be countered with a Dispel from a healer. If both of these things happen, the entire burst sequence is pretty much over, since Frostbolt and Ice Lance don't do lethal damage on their own. So because it has multiple counters and a small ramp up time, we're going to place Frost Mage on the A tier. Up next is Windwalker Monk, which was another spec that was pretty hard to rank. So without question, Windwalker Burst is lethal. Serenity combined with Skyreach comboed into Fist of Fury and Strike of the Windlord can cause monks to deal an absurd amount of damage in such a short time, usually during a stun, which makes it difficult to actually avoid. And since Skyreach can technically be used on multiple targets, Windwalker Burst can be AoE. The crucial downside to this combo is the duration of Serenity itself, which only lasts 12 seconds. That means any full duration CC like Polymorph, Fear, or Cyclone is going to cut its value in half. And since the damage is just so unquestionably scary, we're going to be putting Windwalker on the S tier. Ret Paladin has had an interesting life cycle this expansion. During its rework in Season 1, it would have definitely been a contender for the S tier. Unfortunately, it falls short in Season 3. This is because Paladins have universally shifted over to Crusade, which stacks up damage over time and, therefore, by definition, is not front-loaded. While this can bait some players into using defensives too early, simply monitoring Crusade stacks and trading a cooldown later on is enough to dampen its damage. The actual burst during Crusade itself comes from Final Reckoning, which can be cast from a distance and is actually pretty hard to avoid 
considering Rep Paladins have a longer range on most of their attacks. And even though Crusade violates our first rule of being front-loaded, its near 30-second duration is enough to earn a spot in the honorary a tier. Now let's look at Shadow Priest, which is another unique case who might suffer similar problems to Affliction Warlock. Shadow Priest will either be playing Dark Ascension or Void Eruption, and since the former is currently the more popular build, it's the one we're going to be covering. Bursting as a Shadow Priest involves a few parts, making sure all dots are on the target, then stacking up Catharsis and the tier set in order to do a big hit with Shadow Word Pain of all things. Now, just like Affliction Warlock, this sequence has a pretty ridiculous ramp, especially considering Priests are very prone to getting interrupted during this time. Unlike other cooldown windows though, Shadow Priests really need to wait for the stars to align before actually bursting, all while having to deal with dispels and interrupts. So despite having a short CD, Shadow Priest Burst is just too clunky to be reliable and is going to be on the C tier for now. Now, if you play Priest and are suddenly feeling sad by your C tier ranking that we just slammed on you, well don't worry, because as a standalone ability, Power Infusion is incredibly strong. Now we are going to deviate a bit from our current rankings by giving this single ability its own score here. Power Infusion itself has enormous value since it affects two players and can make any burst window on this list feel almost twice as strong. So because of this, we're going to be giving an honorary S tier score to Power Infusion alone. And by the way, if you find yourself learning a lot in this video, listen, you're not alone. PvP involves way more game knowledge than most people realize. Our essential knowledge courses teach you all of WoW's fundamentals, from enemy buff knowledge to tips on how to counter every class. We even have hundreds of arena matchup guides where pro players guide you step by step through your toughest matchups. So skip the learning phase and rank up fast only at skillcap.com. So of all the specs we ranked so far, each one had a pretty obvious main damage cooldown. Elemental Shaman is an exception. Now, we won't be ranking the cheesy Ascendance AoE one-shot that we've all died to at least once in Solo Shuffle. This sequence is either S plus tier or F tier, depending on whether or not it actually lands. Instead, we're left with the standard build, which doesn't really have a real damage cooldown outside of Fire Elemental, which isn't really used as a burst CD anyways. Now, because of this, we need to look at how Ellie Shamans actually deal burst damage, which is through Primordial Wave. This ability causes the next Lava Burst to affect everyone with Flame Shock, which can then even proc Ascendance, causing AoE Lava Burst to launch out once more, while also granting a mini Bloodlust effect, depending on the number of targets hit. Obviously, this is a lot of damage and can be highly unpredictable due to the casino nature of Elemental Shaman thanks to their mastery, and with that in mind, Ellie damage can be dampened with active dispels and isn't lethal or reliable enough by itself to truly make it to the S tier. But because of its raw efficiency and insane AoE potential, Elemental Shaman will actually go on the A tier. Now, unlike Ellie, Enhancement Shaman has a clearer cooldown window. Using Feral Spirits on top of Primordial Wave to Lightning Bolt damage, which is going to give the Shaman a haste buff depending on the number of targets hit. This is why Enhance and Ellie damage can feel exceptionally good against pet classes since it can funnel Flame Shocks into a massive haste buff, essentially giving themselves Bloodlust for free. With good uptime, the damage is pretty good and even hard to avoid since most of it can be dealt from range. But given the fact that it requires a bit of a setup and a good ramp to be effective, Enhancement Shaman Burst is a bit easier to predict. So although it might be efficient, it lacks the lethality needed to do well, and because of this, we're going to be putting Enhancement Shaman Burst on the B tier. Traditionally, Assassination Rogue is not known as a high burst spec. Although it had its moments in Shadowlands with some sepsis one-shots, the spec has undergone massive changes since then, so let's see if its burst can hold up. There are a few key parts of the true Assassination Burst window. The first is Death Mark, which, as you know by now, will duplicate any bleed damage. Assassination Rogues now even have Shadow Dance, which can allow them to apply improved Garrow to multiple targets easily with indiscriminate carnage. This bleed damage, although definitely strong, is not what we care the most about, though. Instead, the real burst comes from King's Bane, which deals initial damage and then ramps up over time as more poisons are applied. 
It might seem like this ramp would take too long to be effective, but since Envenom increases poison application rate, the damage stacks up incredibly fast, and with a one minute cooldown, King's Bane is very efficient. The main downsides to Assassination Burst is that it's limited to a single target and can be soft countered by any bleed removals. But because of its lethality, we're going to be giving it a spot on the A tier. Looking at log data for sub rogues can be a bit deceiving since it actually ranks as one of the lowest in the game during its burst window. Even though sub rogue burst has been nerfed more than once this expansion, it's still very strong. There's a few cooldowns to monitor. The first is Shadow Blades, which gives the rogue 20% increased damage. The second is Secret Technique, which doesn't deal that much damage on its own, but is delayed and can overlap with other sources of burst. The third is Sepsis. Now, not every rogue plays this talent, but it does hit pretty hard by itself, especially when comboed with Secret Tech and an Eviscerate crit. Some rogues even play with Flagellation, which is similar to Ret Paladin Crusade, building up damage over time and being most lethal at the end of its duration. Even though sub rogues aren't one-shotting everyone anymore, and despite being locked into bursting a single target, the damage is still pretty lethal and very difficult to avoid since it typically involves multiple stuns. And since rogue cooldowns can be CDR'd with Vanish, the burst can be unpredictable, which is why we're also placing it on the A tier. So throughout this list, we've explained that some classes have obscure burst windows, with damage coming from places that you might not expect. Outlaw rogues are perhaps the weirdest one of the bunch. Of course, their main cooldown is technically Adrenaline Rush, but this isn't really where their damage comes from. Their real damage actually comes from the short time frame they get out of Stealth, where they're able to spam their main finisher between the eyes, which will have zero cooldown for six seconds. Because of this, Vanish, Shadow Melt, and even Restealthing is technically the real damage cooldown for Outlaw Rogues, and with the right Roll the Bones buffs, can cause some serious damage immediately and later on. The Shark and Coin buffs are the most important, providing extra crit chance and more cooldown reduction, adding a layer of unpredictability for the future. Outlaw Rogues can even deal high AoE damage thanks to Blade Flurry, which you might have noticed in melee heavy lobbies. This is why in a recent video we emphasized that spacing is vital when playing against this spec, since it cuts down on their AoE damage considerably. And even though it might not be as lethal as some other specs that we've covered, the unpredictability of Outlaw Burst earns it a spot on the A tier. Our last class is Warrior, which will actually score well on our rankings. Like virtually every spec on this list, the Arms Warrior Burst window includes layering abilities. Although Avatar is technically their longest cooldown, it's actually the combination of Warbreaker and Thunderous Roar that signal their burst window. Both of these abilities can affect multiple targets, and with a Sharpened Blade Mortal Strike, Arms Warrior pressure during this time is essentially double as effective. While the damage might not be super lethal, the short cooldown of this sequence is efficient enough to earn it a spot on the A tier. And last up, we have Fury Warrior, whose sequence is almost identical to Arms with one additional button. On top of Avatar, Fury Warriors have Recklessness, which they will use together with Odin's Fury and Thunderous Roar, once again dealing strong damage which can even cleave nearby targets. Odin's Fury has a relatively short cooldown just like Warbreaker, and thanks to Titan's Torment, will automatically apply a short Avatar buff to the Warrior, all while there is potential for a stacking healing reduction debuff on the priority target. So since their burst sequences are so similar, we're putting Fury Warrior as our final spec on the A tier. Anyway, that wraps up our rankings for burst cooldowns in PvP. If you learned a lot from this video, consider dropping a sub, and to learn more about Skillcapped, be sure to visit the links below. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.